Hey everybody, I'm Casey from CaseyFriday.com. This is my tiny house. This is my retro mod, ready to go. Give me some tunes today. Today, I'm going to be doing something that I really don't want to do. I'm going to be testing the continuity of the wires in this house so that I can remove all of the outlets from each of their electrical boxes and put them in some sort of storage container. I will be labeling them with this beautiful sheet of sticker labels I created with pictures and everything because I have crazy OCD. And once I take them out, I will be wire capping the hot and neutral lines together and testing the continuity back at the circuit breaker on each circuit that comes in here. So for instance, the wire that's yellow in the back um, on the right there, that one is the circuit for the lights in here um, the outlet down there, and then the outlet over here, and the light up there, and it continues down and goes to here, to that outlet, and it also goes up to this light. So that's the whole circuit, and basically what I will be doing is I'll be removing an outlet from that location, and I will be tying the, well, I'll test the hot and the neutral from there. I'm going to tie them together and test them back at the breaker box to make sure that they do indeed have continuity all the way. The circuit goes up to the light up there, so I will be tying those together and testing them. And then I'll come down here and tie them together, etc., etc. So I'm basically creating one big loop. Every time I get to the next outlet, the loop gets bigger. And then I test continuity to make sure that everything is connected just fine. And once that's all done, I will have all of the outlets removed with my beautiful sticker labels on them. And then I will be able to um, move on to the next step right before getting the drywall up. Because that is the main goal, is getting the drywall up in here. Main goal is getting this thing done, but that's the next step. So in here, just going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to be replacing this outlet. I got a nicer looking one than this. Uh, this one has that sort of left and right rocker switch, and I got one that has a switch that looks more like these vanity light switches. So it's more of a curve up and down, just like this one is. And it's gonna look a lot better. And then once I get done with that, my next goal is to figure out exactly how the CSST is gonna be coming in here for the propane lines. So I'm gonna be planning that out. I'm probably gonna see how long this electrical task takes. And then once I figure that out, if it hasn't taken too long, because I'm starting today at about, I think it's about 11, 30 or so a.m. Once that's done, I'm going to try to move on to figuring out how to get the propane lines in here because once I figure that out and I can get those two uh, sides of this interior bathroom wall figured out, how they're going to be all closed in, then I'm ready to go. I'm ready to close this thing in. And I actually think I'm saying that for the first time and there's nothing else that I need to do. That's pretty wild. Every time I say just one more thing and then I'm done, there are always more things. But for now, I'm gonna crack open the windows in this beast. And hopefully everything goes well. I mean, it's all Romex, it's all basically connected. So if something goes poorly, that's gonna be quite a pain taking the insulation out and getting this rebuilt. But that's what I'm doing today. Well, I'm to the part of this where I'm getting a bit bored with doing this circuit testing. I've tested this, which is the outlet to the right of where the oven's gonna be and the stove. And it comes from up there. It's the first outlet in this circuit. I tested it down to there, I still get continuity. I've tested it up to here to the light and I still get continuity. And this wire comes across the bathroom and over to this light outlet and down into here and I still get continuity in there. So this is pretty much as I expected. You know, I put the wires in and they were brand new and they're all metal that's connected and not broken in the middle yet. So I have not gotten down to this one yet because they don't have enough wire caps to put all these hots and neutrals together, the white and the black wires. And I'm just sort of lazy right now. I don't really want to look around for them. So I thought, let's move on to the next task. So my next task, the first thing I did is I sort of cleaned up this bathroom area. I put the echo temp box over there and some stuff on top. And then I cleaned up as much in this little corner as I could. And um, I chewed through one of the wires. So that's a new wire right there. I'm going to have to put that into this little outlet box, which is gonna hang right here and give power via the switch to this bathroom utility vent. I'm thinking about the propane line and what my plan was gonna be is come up through that bottom plate right there and then I was gonna have a little outlet just like the water outlets down there. But then I thought, let me take a look underneath this house. And I took a photo, so take a look at the photo right now. I'll pop that up on the screen. 
And what I noticed is that the large beams that are holding all the cross members of the bottom of this trailer go down lower than those cross members. So at first I thought I was going to have to drill holes through all the cross members to get to the front of the trailer to put the uh, propane connection out here on the tongue of the trailer. But it turns out that's not the case. What I think I'm actually going to do is get some hangers and you can just get the little metal straps and you get a sort of lock nut and wrap them around something and lock them. And then I'm going to have the propane line go down very likely straight through the floor right there and back and just on hangers all the way to the front and then it'll be routed out to the front somehow for the propane tank up there. And then over here, I'm gonna do basically the same thing. So it's going to go, I'm not quite sure if it will be down through one of these bottom plates if I wanna drill through something like that, or if I just wanna go straight through the floor for the propane connection, because this is all gonna have sort of a cabinet on it and be covered up. It's not very important that it looks incredibly nice. But that's what I need to decide right now, and the one deciding factor for on this side of the house is the fact that I will be having a counter coming out right here. So the sink will be coming out, and then it will end 24 inches which is somewhere along right here, 24 inches from the window. And I just don't know if I drill a hole through this bottom plate. Number one, I need to look at the bottom of the trailer and see am I gonna be hitting any steel cross members? I need to make sure I'm not doing that. And number two, I don't know if that's gonna be inside where we want this counter to be or not. I need to do a couple measurements and figure that out, but I'm really happy I've just made a decision. This is the last, I would say, really huge decision on this tiny house. And that last huge decision is, how am I going to route the propane lines from inside here to the tongue of the trailer? So I'm going to be using straps to hang them and I have no fears that it'll be fine during transit because like I said, the long V cross members are even lower than the horizontal cross members throughout this whole thing. So there's plenty of clearance on the ground. There's plenty of clearance period because this is a big trailer. This is two 7,200 pound axles. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. And now I just need to figure out how much CSST do I need. I'm gonna try to buy a Home Depot gift card at 11.25% off through some online retailer that I found. Use that to purchase the CSST. I believe a 25 foot roll is about 46 bucks. And I think I'm gonna need probably 50 feet or so. Um, actually, I'm going underneath the trailer. I might only need 25 feet, it's just right there. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna measure the length from the very front wall all the way to wherever I wanna drill this hole. And then I'm gonna get underneath the trailer and I'm gonna measure it under there and see what it looks like and see where I am with regard to cross members. And then I'm gonna get a big ass drill extension that's sort of like the one that I used to drill through the steel to get the uh, carriage bolts through to keep the house in place where it is. It's probably gonna be like 30 or 40 bucks. Those things are really expensive, but it needs to be really long. It needs to be like a foot long because I'm going through three quarter inch plywood right here. And then there's a two by four. There are the slats that came on the trailer underneath. So, you know, six inches would do it, but I wanna go overkill, get 12 inches, just drill the bejesus out of it down there. And that way I will have a direct route down and drywall. That's right, this thing's gonna get drywalled. I'm still not done with this damn electrical testing, but I will finish it. I will do it because I'm motivated and I wanna get the drywall. And I'm gonna order that stuff, you know, maybe even today and have it delivered and uh, drop it in the shed over here next to this house and get ready to hang the drywall. So immediate next steps, finish the electrical testing. There's not that much and I can just tape these together instead of using wire nuts. So there's not too much left to test just to make sure that all this wire is still good. I'd rather check it before I put it all together just to be dead sure. All right, I'm gonna get to work and I will be back to you with an update as soon as I have something else.